that? Sure. So um, just want to let folks know that um, we'll be uh, providing real time captioning for this uh, webinar and the um, and the Leadership Academy webinars going forward. Um, if you have never used um, real time the captions in Zoom, if you'll go to the bottom of your Zoom screen, there should be an option to click on a button uh, to turn the closed captions on. Um, once you do that, you'll see the captions at the bottom of your screen. Um, if you if the captions are too small for you to read, there should be a button next to um, the video. Um, uh, toggle in Zoom where you can um, adjust your settings and you can make the captions smaller or bigger as you need to. That didn't even show me the window I wanted, so. But. Okay, so with that, we will launch. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so for about half the people on the phone or on the on the call, I'm expecting that I'm a familiar face, uh, and for half, uh, uh, not so much. Uh, my name is Dan Crimmins, and uh, this is the first of our follow-up webinars for our AUCD Leadership Academy. Uh, and invited to this have uh, the uh, participants in the Leadership Academy and their coaches. And so we'll talk a little bit more about um, we'll talk today about. Uh, what our hopes and uh, expectations are for the next several months um, as uh, you, the participants in the Leadership Academy, and your coaches work together. With that, um, uh, this is what we'll, we'll talk about today. A quick overview of the Leadership Academy experience for the coaches, um, just to bring you up to speed on what we covered when we were together. Um, we have a review of who was there with a, it's a, an excerpt from the directory of the participants and um, you'll get to see the sort of the range of folks who were, who were there with us together in June. Um, a little bit uh, quickly on, on sort of the hopes and expectations for the, for the participants for this next year and then um, some, uh, some more specific uh, and comments on uh, how we were hoping that the coaches and the participants will work together. Uh, you can see the other thing here is that uh, we've, uh, I'll say we've recycled our universal design for learning and uh, in laying out our topics by colors. Uh, and then I'm going to go to a slide that will in fact not have a red, oh, this does have a red, red side background. Uh, we wanna talk about the overview. Um, and this slide does not have a red background, but I've categorized it as a red slide, uh, you see in the upper right. Um, the AUCD Leadership Academy was organized around the uh, work of Parker Palmer and the Center for Courage and Renewal. Um, and it really is a values informed uh, approach to social justice and, and issues that relate to equity and, and organizations that serve folks who have historically been uh, often underserved or, or um, marginalized. We had, um, what we talked about was sort of four major components that are out the outer spokes of, the, of the, uh, this graphic, uh, the history of disability, disability rights and independent living as movements, uh, a, a focus on self-awareness of personal and organizational strengths, a, uh, an orientation to the approach called collective impact, and then a uh, focus on the importance of partnerships, networking, and community organizing in leadership roles uh, for the kinds of organizations uh, that were represented in the training. The, uh, uh, this is uh, sort of the, the narrative that, that goes back through some of those things, courage and circle of frameworks, uh, collective impact to guide our work in system change, we used a particular assessment called VIA, uh, which is an acronym for Values in Action, uh, that was participants to organize to uh, assess their own strengths. We visited the National Center on Civil and Human Rights here in Atlanta. 
uh, we had then uh, uh, opportunities for participant-led learning and sharing using a, a sort of an organizational approach we call open space. And we used small groups, large groups, discussion, reflection, we had a graphic facilitator available during our time together. We captured um, the imagery of, of what was said and some of the content of what was said. We had the pre, uh, three pre-academy webinars and we're planning um, I think seven or eight post-academy web webinars. The other post, uh, two more post-academy activities are what we're calling self-reflection ally groups and I will uh, talk a little bit more about those in a, in a few minutes and then the coaching which we'll focus on today. Hello to you all as you're popping up on the screen. Um, so what did we, uh, what were the critical components? Uh, the academy, as we developed the content, we've, it was informed by uh, sort, of, sort of extensive work with folks that have had a similar kind of experience and what they uh, described as what works. Um, we've had a curriculum that, that really pulled together values, strengths, and commitments. Dan, can, can I quickly ask people to mute their uh, phones if they're calling in? I think we've muted everyone who's on video, um, but we're getting some feedback and uh, the captionist is asking us to do that. Okay. Thank you, Andy. I can't, I can't uh, talk and look at the captions at the same time, so <laughs> but thank you for picking up on that. Uh, we, we wanted to design this to engage adult learners and actually diverse learners and thus uh, sort of tried to incorporate the principles of universal design for learning throughout. And then, as I mentioned, um, we really, the, the intensive week-long experience was both preceded and followed by uh, a, activities that intended to uh, assist folks, I think, in really uh, integrating the, the, the knowledge, the, the skills, the attitudes, the values, to their professional practice and personal lives. So I'm gonna do this quickly. Uh, I think it's, it's fun just to see who was there in the room while we were together. 23 participants representing uh, University Centers for Excellence in Developmental Disabilities, the USEDs, representing the Leadership Education and Neurodevelopmental Disabilities uh, programs, the LENS, whoops, sorry. Um, we had folks from uh, state and national disability organizations, and including uh, Centers for Independent Living, um, uh, Developmental Disability Councils, uh, the Association of University Centers for Dis on Disabilities, and then a, a, a number of other community and university partners were, were represented in the training. And here, just very quickly, the first six of our participants and uh, not sure how many of you are on the call now, but uh, Jennifer Accardo from, from uh, Children's Hospital at, at Virginia Commonwealth University, uh, Chitra Adams from University of Kentucky, Kate Brady from the Georgia Council on Developmental Disabilities, Carol Criswell from Providence Health and Services Program in, in Portland, Oregon, um, Lena Danko from West Virginia University, Shonda Dunn from University of Tennessee in the Bowling Center, Julie Espinosa from REACH in uh, the SIL in Texas, in Plano, Texas. Courtney Evans-Taylor from Vanderbilt, you said. Ashley Greenwald from the Nevada, you said. Uh, Patricia Herman from the South Dakota, you said. Amita Janaf from the University of Georgia, you said. Elizabeth Koss from the uh, Ohio State University, you said. And she's also, I believe, the virtual trainee for the USEDs and LENS uh, with AUCD. Cheryl Kunzer, from the, who's a member of the Michigan Developmental Disability Council, Christina Leone from, from the University of Miami Mailman Center, Rita Maldonado from the Health, uh, from MPHB, uh, Angela Martin from Wayne State University, the, Michigan, the USED in Michigan, Ken Mitchell from the uh, Disability Link, the, the SIL, the uh, Center for Independent Living here in Atlanta, Megan Peters from University of Oklahoma Health Science Center, and there you said Linda Russo, who's with the University of Alabama uh, programs, both across their LEND and their, uh, I believe their um, pediatric pulmonary program. Uh, Terry Tapia from the University of New Mexico, you said. Tafa Tuatua, Tuula, sorry Tafa, uh, from the, you said in American Samoa. 
Liz Weintraub from AUCB and Patricia Suda from the uh, University of Southern California, you said. So it was a, a nice group of people, 23 people, uh, 20 different states and territories, faculty and staff, uh, current and emerging leaders, other community partners. Um, so we really, uh, I'm going to say there's a great group, a nice bonding experience for the group together. The, um, so what were our hopes and expectations? One of the things that when we were designing the program, uh, we came sort of face to face with was there's a, in many ways, an infinite amount of content that can be uh, presented in a, in a, in a week long experience. And what is the content that I'll say is most powerful uh, when uh, provided to a group as a collective in a space? And we deliberately moved away from uh, spending too much time on, um, I'll say, leadership tricks and much more on, on leadership values and, and how do we inform uh, who we are and, and what informs what we do. So we wanted to provide people with the framework and the chance to, ch to explore personal strengths um, as they relate to their organizational roles. Um, and uh, you know, clearly that was one of the things we wanted to keep in mind is that participants were being uh, supported by their organizations to attend this training and uh, with the expectation that on return uh, people will contribute in some way to that or their organizational identity and the accomplishments. And so for those of you who are on the call today as coaches, uh, I sort of ask you to hold on to this because we really see this as a place where uh, you have a, a really important role in supporting um, the participants in the training as they articulate how might they use this uh, potential change in perspective, um, hopeful clarification of roles and values uh, to fulfill an organizational mission. During the uh, course of the academy, the one week academy, uh, the participants all identified a leadership challenge that they were going to be working on during the course of this, uh, this next year. We, um, those, those, we did not define exactly how those should be articulated, whether those were um, you know, needed to be clearly organizationally based or personally based. Uh, that was left to the um, individual. We expect that the articulation of it will, will happen in the context of the organization, at least in part. Uh, the participants worked together in small groups. They followed the specific, uh, I said, called it an interaction template here to develop their plans. Uh, they worked for, uh, each person had about an hour to be the focus of a, of a, of a group communication process. And um, that was the basis for forming what we will call self-reflection ally groups. Uh, and th those groups, uh, the groups that met for a full day together uh, here in Atlanta are continuing to meet together over the course of the year to support this continued development and examination of the, of the, the personal development in, 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 in the leadership sphere. Um, we asked all the participants to identify a coach in their home organization or community to serve as a support for implementing these new perspectives in their organizations. Uh, we were deliberately vague uh, whether that person should be in a direct supervisory role. Um, I think many cases that with people saw that at the, their direct supervisor as a natural uh, coach. Uh, some might have uh, elected to, uh, I'll say, take uh, request the participation from someone in a in a different part of the organization. Um, maybe even jumping a rung in terms of the supervisory level. Um, we also, we do ask that the coaching activities not be part of an annual review process or sort of a regular employee, employee evaluation process. And I would certainly expect that, um, that the participation in a leadership academy might be um, commented on as a, during, in a summary of, of you know, what was the person's, what did this person do this year? But if there's uh, particular activities or particular dialogue in the, that's revealed in coaching, we would ask that, um, you know, say that that not be the, that not really not be the focus. If there's a, a vulnerability that's revealed or an area of, of uh, 
that a person wants to address and strengthen that um, wouldn't ordinarily become part of a coaching process that, that remain sort of a, I, I don't want to say absolutely in confidence, but that be a, a, a contract between the participant and the coach. So uh, our, what are our hopes and expectations that people will go, they'll recognize their strengths and they'll figure out ways in which they might contribute differently and in, in, in a better way to their organization. And just a, as, a, um, as a heads up, uh, I'm looking at a timer here. I'm about 14 minutes into this uh, discussion. It'll probably take another five minutes or so to talk about what do we expect from coaches and participants. And at that point, we'll uh, open the floor for questions um, uh, for those of you who might have them. So the nitty gritty, as much as we, uh, as we can determine it, um, here's the, the self-reflection allies. There are six groups of folks that participated in the, uh, in the experience together. Uh, five groups of four, one group of three. These groups were formed during the Academy week. And I believe most of these groups have already met once with one of the Leadership Academy faculty members who will serve, who, who is serving as a facilitator and will continue to serve as a facilitator to that group over the course of a year. Uh, the plan is that these groups will meet about every other month. Um, and as I said, they've already started. And uh, my, my sense of the first reports is that um, people have found the, the meetings to be uh, valuable and, um, and really supporting uh, the, some of the, uh, I'll say the broadening of perspective that that a, that a number of people uh, reported as being part of the academy experience. So the leadership coaches, what is your job? Um, you know, it's a vague one, <laughs> but important. We see that your job is to support the participants in translating those leadership academy commitments and skills into actions in, in home organizations. Um, the, the people in the academy, the participants in the academy came from such very different places in terms of, uh, I'll say both the, the level of influence in their organizations. Some might work with relatively few numbers of people. Some worked with very large numbers. Um, uh, level of, of sort of title as, as, as in terms of um, uh, authority, uh, formal authority in the organization. So it's a little bit hard to, to, it was hard, I think, to be more precise than this. Uh, and it really was wherever you started this journey, as you, as you come to, um, as you take these skills back to your organization, wh what are you going to do with them and how will you do with them well? And is there a friendly person who will, uh, who will have perhaps a different perspective on the organization for whatever reason, position, authority, history, um, so that, that they might assist this process. So the, we were hoping that the coaches would meet formally, face-to-face -face with participants five times during the year um, in this following the training. Uh, we're hoping at least two of these sessions will be observations, one where the participant observes the coach and the other where the coach observes the participant. And then the participants will bring be responsible for bringing kind of a, the content for three additional meetings that are spaced out across the course of the year toward a, a leadership goal. So uh, immediately we would, or well, we would hope that sh shortly after this meeting, and I have a, a uh, slide that talks a little bit more about scheduling, but that there will be one meeting after this webinar to lay out a schedule for the year. At that time, there might be uh, an opportunity to define what would a what is the what would a good thing for the participant to see the coach do, um, whether it's you know work with another organization, internal work in your own organization, uh, you, know, you know work with a community group, uh, conduct a workshop. And, and you know, it's, it's really intended as a as a place to to, to have a and. and a more in-depth chance to sort of see uh, the coach at work. And then that is reciprocated at some point during the year. One opportunity where the coach observes the participant. Um, 
and then I said that here that the participants will be responsible for um, for you know developing the content and developing an agenda for the additional meetings to discuss how those their academy experiences are being applied in the work setting. Um, as we um, as we approach this, though, I, I wanted to, you know, to talk about something that may be a little less familiar um, to some of the coaches. But during the course of the of the academy, uh, we use using this framework of courage and renewal. The one of the touchstones, the guiding principles, the unifying principles, is that, um, that in interaction, ask open and honest questions. And open questions are those that you don't already know the answer. And honest questions are those that support the other in reaching a deeper level of understanding. Uh, and I have a typo there because I was thinking about what I was going to write and um, I recycled, so I had something and I decided not to use it. So uh, what we want to say there is honest questions are those that support the other in reaching a deeper level of understanding. The, um, the, the part of this is, is, uh, uh, is how do we do coaching without, uh, without steering? How do we do coaching without leading, uh, I'll say, the witness? How do, we, how do we ask questions that don't suggest? Um, uh, the, the, the question that we came back to uh, to use as the example of a perhaps not so open and honest question as uh, have you ever considered therapy to discuss this? Um, uh, clearly, there's a suggestion of an action embedded in that question. Um, so I would ask you, uh, you know, to, um, to the degree that you are capable as coaches that, that, you, um, you know, that you try to use this uh, with your participants. And uh, those of you who are participants, I would, I would ask you to, if you feel that you're being led or steered, um, to, be, uh, to exercise the assertiveness to say, um, what, what would be most helpful to me right now would be feeling that the question was perhaps um, a bit more open and perhaps a little less directive. Um, I, will, I will trust that you can work that level of uh, trust into the relationship with the coach that you can say that. Um, at the end of the year, and uh, this is a, uh, I apologize for the vagueness here. Um, uh, there's a little bit that we're, we're working on of, as we're con, you know, constructing what the, what the nature of the follow-up is. But at the end of the year, we will ask the, the coaches to provide a brief evaluation of the coaching experience. We'll ask the participants to provide a probably a somewhat longer evaluation of the coaching experience and its utility. And we will, um, we're looking at different possible scales or instruments to help that us in, in that process. We'll give you a lot of time to um, see those ahead of time. The intention is certainly not to do anything that is a uh, catching anybody at not doing, you know, this is, a, this is a, a, a good thing that everyone is doing together and we really want to support that. But we want it to be as valuable for uh, both parties as possible. Uh, I mentioned, you know, here's a rough schedule that you know we're doing the coaching webinar um, today in in August. That I would hope before October that the coach and participant are able to have at least one meeting where they can and lay out a schedule for the rest of the year. Ideally, there'd be an observation before December. Uh, a second meeting before February, another observation by April, uh, and then the final meeting and wrap up by uh, or June or by June. Um, these are rough. Uh, they there's there's no um, there's no sequence that is absolutely required here. Uh, I'll say other than meeting one to schedule the contacts for the year, uh, and then I think that things like the observations obviously are going to be based on. Um, mutual convenience and, and scheduling. Um, the, um, and then just as a, um, I just found another typo. I, I do want to say thank you to those of you on the phone today and those of you who may see this uh, um, as, a, as a recorded webinar. Uh, thank you for taking the time to work with me 
groups that were part of us um, for that week and providing us with the feedback on the process. It will be important as we continue. Um, we've already begun planning for next year's Leadership Academy and uh, we received some really valuable feedback for the participants in this, in this group. Um, I think each step along the way we will learn and, and we have the commitment to make it, um, I'll say to make it better. Um, so what are our expectations? Regular meetings during the, over the year, open and honest questions, reciprocal observations, and then that the participants will generate content for at least three meetings. And hopefully these will be face-to-face, -face, but maybe if not, then through uh, some other platforms such as Skype or Zoom. I, we do think it, it's, we'd like it to be sort of more than a phone call if that's, if that's possible. With that, um, I will open the floor for some questions. But I, I wanted to mention that um, at the at the end of the academy and and uh, in some of the follow up communication with folks, there were several uh, topics identified for uh, follow up webinars, and there was some recruiting of folks who would participate in them. Closing the chasm was really talking about a sort of greater involvement and integration of activities and some of the work we do across um, stakeholder groups uh, with a, making sure there is a real representation of both people with disabilities, including especially intellectual and developmental disabilities in the work that we do. Uh, a topic that emerged was the um, sort of the, some of the critical issues that women confront in, in taking on leadership positions in, in some of our organizations. Um, so that the, I mean, the first is scheduled for September. There's a date scheduled that, that that's that will I believe it's already been circulated. Um, there's a date scheduled for October. We hope to have a uh, a reunion of sorts in at a UCD meeting and and potentially for those of you who won't attend that, we'll see what we can do to uh, create a a visual connection um, for. Uh, you know, if, if, if at all feasible for folks to join in for at least part of that. Uh, in January, there was a, we want to renew, revisit the Courage and Renewal Framework, and there's one open topic uh, time available in March. And then um, really try to take a, a webinar in a time slot in May to, to get some closure for, for us all on what's next uh, with your careers and, and, and your professional personal development. So I headed this with questions. Um, and at the risk of, of cacophony, uh, are there folks that would like to unmute and ask a question? I can't see everyone. Maybe I Andy, can I ask you just to unmute and test the questions? Hi, everybody. Thank you. I'm unmuted. Okay, you're back to mute. And Patrice, I okay. can. <laughs> I could call on Patrice, but she's not listening to me here. <laughs> oh, no, I am listening. Oh, she's listening. I just trying to figure out how to do the button. Okay. Well, you know, it's funny. Pablo, I don't know you. Um, who are you with? I'm with uh, the Vanderbilt Kennedy Center. And I'm, oh, terrific. Uh, yeah, with Courtney Taylor. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'm this is to Pat just... from South Dakota. And I had a question that we will get this email because my mentor couldn't be here today. He's in Quebec. So. I'm going to look over my shoulder at Mark and uh, yes. Yes, I be, figured so. <laughs> this was being, you figured I'd look over my shoulder? To, no, no, but it, <laughs> I thought I'd ask. That was, that was good figuring, Pat. <laughs> we'll, we'll post it soon. Yes, it will be posted with the, um, with the, with the link. And we'll send it. Oh, and I had one other question. Is it too late to do the um, evaluation? I didn't get that done from the uh, no, actually, um, uh, the, we can we can at least do the evaluation. I believe we had um, 17 or 18 of 23 people, so I'll say you're not alone, Pat. Let okay. Me 
anyone else if we could the closer we can get i think to 100 percent on that the uh, uh, you know I, um, we welcome the feedback there were right. actually really valuable things in in what we've what we've reviewed already okay this week i'll do it great thank you this is this was and i'm just listening because i'm at home and i don't don't know how to work my zoom by myself hey liz how are you? Hi. I'm glad Fine, you're how are you? I'm well. Some of us will see you later. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, you will. Okay. Hi, Dan. Yes. This is, can, I, can, can you hear me? This is Sharon Milberger from Wayne State University, Angela Martin's mentor. Uh, hi, Sharon. Hi, Dan. I, I um, can't see you, but I see a I see a screen with your name on it. How's okay, that? great. My question is back to, to you had mentioned about the observations, um, yeah. both that you observe the mentor, the mentee, and the and the mentee observes the mentor. Any recommendations on what that is? What those what's observed? Uh, you know, uh, um, I could give you some examples of things that I I would say that could be cool. Um, you know, some of it would depend on, um, you know, I'll say it's, it's, uh, Angela is your participant, correct? Yes. Yeah. So some of it would depend on, I'll say some of what I'll say, uh, Angela's priorities are, but, um, I'm going to say there's some things like if Angela hasn't, you know, doesn't re regularly go to your DD council meetings, would that be a useful kind of place to go to see, you know where and how some of the decisions are being made if there was a um alternatively if there was a uh a, a university level um committee that you're active on where um some critical decisions are being made maybe that would be something to sort of invite somebody into uh, i i i use um my I did a health policy fellowship and, and spent a year in Washington, and um, I found it really valuable that that uh, people will be very inviting and uh, I, forgiving is not the right word, but sort of welcoming. I think to say this is a person who's looking to take on new and different roles, and they want to get a sense of what we do here and how we do it, and um, and then you just you just bring them along. So it's it's. You know, that would be, that's just a couple of things. I don't, is that helpful or? Very helpful. I just wasn't sure if it was specific related to the, her goals or just j can be broader. And I think you've answered my question. That yeah, it can I think it's, it's something to, uh, it would be the, it offers the opportunity where, uh, say she gets to ask you the open and honest questions about, you know, sort of what's happening and, and what might a, um, you know, why did that come down that way? And, and, um, how did how how did you use your skills to influence an outcome there? I, I think it, it it really is it's intended to offer that platform for uh, kind of the shared experience around which then you can have a I think a conversation. Great, thank you. Other questions? I'm going to reflect uh, here very quickly and probably to my. Um, uh, a great picture that uh, this is a time that opening the floor to questions has actually worked really smoothly. <laughs> um, Dan, um, this is Terry. May I ask you a quick question? Sure. Hi, Terry. Hi. Um, the the mentor that I've chosen, and I believe she's on. Uh, she may be calling in. Has retired retired from our university. However, I have had an opportunity in the past to observe her in the leadership role. And um, that is, you know, one of the reasons why I chose her um, as my coach. If we don't have another opportunity in the future since she is retired, may I use that as the opportunity to, to have a her? I'll say, you know, um, uh, I might, I would probably then recommend that you take her on two observations sort of of you, but you, but you use one of them to be uh, a, a bit more, um, uh, a bit more focused on, uh, you know, how might you have handled this, you know, sort of, again, have it be the dialogue where um, her style is revealed. Um, but I think it's, you know, I think the intention is that there's sort of 
you know, she, she's more on the lead in asking you questions on one and you're more on the lead in asking questions on the other. Okay, um, I will try to find some opportunities maybe to include her in part of an act, you know, a leadership activity maybe where I'm facilitating. If she's willing to do that, that might be a way to. Great. Up. Thank you. And, and, um, and I, I, at the risk of, of wanting of people not really doing this, because we really want you to do this, um, you know, none of this is written in stone. It really is, is how do you make it work for you? So, uh, but that would be a way. Someone else was asking. Yes, this is Liz, and um, I when I applied to be um, in the leadership of academy, and um, I have been involved with it from day one. Um, I wasn't sure who to put down, so um, I asked um, people at AUCG, and they recommended that. I I asked John um, Chida, who's the associate director, and um, I'm not even sure that John knows that. I think we had a conversation about this before the academy, and then we got busy during the summer, and so I'm not even sure that we, um, we have had a conversation, and I'm not even sure how to bring it up to him because um, I do so much with him anyway, and um, I I'm also in the design phase of the academy, so I'm not sure what you want me to do. Yeah, Liz, I, I think, well, first, I think he's a great choice because um, he's, he's relatively new to AUCD and therefore, um, you know, some of the other people that you, you might have picked, you've had, you've had lots and lots of exposure to how they work when they're in a, you know, in a new space or a different space or where they're out there. Somebody, you know, so um, I think you can just, um, you know, you can just grab him and, and say, oh, by the way, John, um, in case you didn't know, uh, uh, this was part of the Leadership Academy experience, and um, I've been asked, and and we, uh, we're I'm hoping that you'll do this with me, and and um, I I can't. My guess is that he will he will be more than gracious in saying absolutely yes. Okay. Okay. Thanks. This is Julie. Hi, Julie. I guess I didn't read my email well enough. I did not know our mentors were supposed to be on this webinar with us. Um, will that always be the case each time we do a post webinar? No, this was the only time. Oh. <laughs> uh, this is the only time they were invited, but um, uh, if, if you're, if, you know, you can certainly circulate it with them and if, if there's any questions, I'm happy to get on the phone with you know you and the and the, the coach mentor uh, to sort of provide them any background that might be helpful. I think that was completely my fault for just clicking on accept and not really reading the whole the whole email. Sorry. Thank you for clicking on accept. How's that? <laughs> nice to see you. Dan, this is Patrice. Hi. Hi, Patrice. Um, and hi, everybody on the call. I miss you guys. Um, I'm not sure if I missed something, but have all the webinars been scheduled? Uh, I think we have, uh, no. I think we have dates, though, for September and October. And I don't believe January is set yet, but we'll work on that and get that to you um, soon. Okay. So I. I need to go back and look at some email that I obviously missed that had the September and October dates. Or well, we do you have, have those ready. Yeah, and we can actually we can set that up, send that out when the when the this link goes out. Um, Great. We can do that as the kind of one reminder remit email so that um, we're not um, bombarded with lots and lots and lots of <laughs> of communications. 
Thank you. The days we live in, right? And it is good to see. Yeah, especially many, after we came back. And it, and I I'm I'm scrolling through the participant list here, and so I I I too want to say hello to everybody. On the call. Looks like we've got a really nice representation from our our group. And any other questions? If there are none, um, I, I'm, I'm guessing that um, no one will be disappointed if I say, well, why don't we wrap it up here? And, uh, uh, you know, just in case uh, we still have, um, you, can, you can reach us by mail or email, obviously. Um, these were the formal uh, places for the Academy correspondence, AUCD Academy, but I think at this point you all have um, uh, the individual emails for you know for any any of the of the faculty or staff here and, and so feel free to use them. Um, it's often better to probably try to reach multiples of us um, that way um, we have redundancy on our side. And Julie, I see that you unmuted again. Um, in the chat, people are asking questions in the in the chat box. Oh. Okay. I'm not seeing the chat box. Perhaps that's why. Here's my. So someone is asking about if the groups have been playing that are playing the webinars have started working together. Uh, and the answer to that I believe is no. Um, and uh, but that can also be be uh, addressed in the the follow up email. And where is the oh, is there, that one? Dan, I'm listening. Yeah, Dan, this is Angela. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I have a quick question. I wanted to know if um, if the coaches are um, the, the couple topics that we have post um, academy that were uh, organized that were organized around obviously um, bridging the chasm and women in leadership, etc. If, if if it's fine to share that discussion information with our, our um, coaches or mentors? I'll say absolutely. Um, I, I don't, okay. I think those are, um, I think the intent was though of those was that they be uh, provide sort of form for continued discussion, but there'd be no proprietary or no uh, deeply personal parts of those. The, um, the, the place that I feel is, is, is Kind of protected by confidence as the uh, ally groups, um, and absolutely, so the, the, I would, I would, I don't, unless it was an, an agreement. Everyone on the group agreed that they were going to invite their coaches to that for some particular reason. I, I wouldn't, you know, that would be the only thing. But I think the webinar is going to be um, intended to be uh, informational and um, and and frankly non-controversial. Okay, great. Thank you. This is a test here. <laughs> Do you remember all of these slides? Hi, okay. Dan. This is Courtney. Hi, Courtney. Hi. Um, I have a question about the webinar planning committees and um, who we might email if we're interested in joining another planning team. Oh, sure. Um, uh, we'll do a status report on that, and I'm, okay. I'm thinking that Mark, because he knows how to make this uh, thing here work, um, <laughs> and I clearly don't. Um, uh, we'll, I'm, I'm hearing now that this will be comprehensive, so we'll give you sort of the status of who's on the planning team, uh, the dates for the different topics, and uh, and then if somebody wants to join, uh, you know, they'll be then trying to. Obviously, for September, it's going to be trying to find a time sooner rather than later to do some of the initial planning, um, and then um, and then everyone is going to be welcome. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thanks. So now I'll try again. If there is nothing else, although see, this is fun. If we pause for a few minutes, other questions come up. Um, well, if you if it's not clear, we love you guys. <laughs> that was a great week together. We bonded, and um, 
you know, we really hope that all's going well with you back at home and, and uh, that we have these opportunities to touch base with you. So uh, if there's nothing else, I will sign off here. But, but um, uh, Dan, come on. This is Patrice. I have a quick question sure. just in terms of scheduling. Yeah. Um, for the a AUCD meeting, um, was there a day or general ballpark that we should, you know, keep free? Um, I, we will, we're going on a phone call with AUCD in 15 minutes. Um, that will be in the communication. Okay, great. Yeah, because okay. a lot of us, you know, plan a lot of extra meetings, so. Yes, yes. And, and AUCD can be brutal because then people can find out that the only free time to meet common is seven o'clock in the morning, but I will tell you. Exactly. I am conscientiously <laughs> opposed to the West seven o'clock in the that morning is brutal. meeting. Yeah. Okay. But thanks for that. Um, and now I'll say goodbye. <laughs> Be well, all. Okay. Bye. Bye, Liz. And show over here. From where? Um, all the one vicious things. <laughs> Uh, we're hosting on Zoom like this. Um. <laughs>